Uh, cool. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gents. We are going to crack on with our next speaker, uh, Oksana Dambrauskait of uh, Decathlon. Decathlon has a really interesting story. Uh, it's a huge, huge retailer, and over the pandemic, uh, they ended up closing their contact center, which, uh, which it was a, a bold move and replaced a lot of those interactions with asynchronous messaging across a whole bunch of different channels. We've been lucky enough to have uh, Decathlon on the podcast uh, to discuss this, and the lessons in here are absolutely really, really interesting. We've been talking about a lot about voice today. We've been talking about a lot of the kind of like uh, the ephemeral nature of voice, whereas moving to asynchronous channels, certainly on social media and, and things like that, is, is a totally different ball game still. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Oksana. Uh, hi, everyone. Nice to see you today. Uh, so I will start with a quick intro of uh, what is Decathlon in case some people don't know about Decathlon. Uh, so Decathlon is a sports retailer, so we sell sport items. Uh, we have more than 1,600 stores uh, worldwide and currently we are present in more than 60 countries. We are an omni retailer, so we have physical stores and also online shops. And uh, me, myself, uh, so I will talk today about how implementing uh, conversational AI helped us to uh, be three years ahead of our um, uh, contact center strategy. So we plan to do something in the future and thanks to conversational AI, we did it much sooner, basically. Uh, so uh, to start with, a little bit of context. So how did this whole story start? Uh, first of all, uh, until 2018, basically, uh, we had quite a traditional contact center at that time, very simple structure. Uh, we had phone lines open and uh, we also had email contacts. So customers could contact us by phone or by email. Phone was the main contact channel at that point, so 80% of all the contacts came by phone and the other 20 by email. Uh, moving on from there, in 2019, uh, we realized that we need to um, implement more solutions for customers. Uh, we also started using live chat. It was quite a simple live chat solution, uh, so no AI, uh, of course, at that point. Uh, just very, very simple chat. Um, the agent comes on our, uh, the person comes on our website, sorry, chats to an agent about a query, so nothing uh, very exciting there, and the agent just replies uh, chatting manually, let's say no automation or uh, prepared uh, responses, nothing. At that point, we had phone lines open as well, so this leaves us with three contact channels. Uh, phone, the main one, 70% of all the contacts, Email, uh, now a little bit uh, less, um, but still around 20% of contacts, and the live chat solution, uh, which is 10% uh, of the contacts. Uh, those solutions were quite limited, both phone and uh, live chat, because as it is live chat and there is no automation, we can only chat when agents are available. So if no agents available, uh, no live chat available for our customers, uh, this is why it was only 10% of all the contacts. At that point, uh, because we started live chat, we saw that it is quite user friendly for agents. Customers also left very good feedbacks on it. We started planning uh, to implement um, some kind of automation on it. So to put, uh, maybe not AI at that point, but to aut automatize as much as we can to make it more efficient. Because we saw that live chat can be uh, much more efficient than phone or email. Uh, so we uh, created a three-year strategy where we are going to automatize a majority of our contacts uh, using um, chat solutions. And then in 2020, as everyone know, our life changed because COVID hit us all very, very hard. Uh, what COVID um, meant for us is that in our contact center, uh, we were overflown with contacts. So, as I mentioned at the beginning, in Decathlon, we have physical stores and online shop. Physical stores had to be closed. Uh, we kept only the online customer service uh, center. Uh, this meant that basically that customer service center was the only uh, point of contact for customers. So all the customers all of a sudden started contacting uh, people who were the online customer service support. Uh, we had at that point 45 stores with all of them closed. All those customers, again, calling the contact center, chatting the contact center, emailing the contact center. So it became 
very, very problematic. We added more resources, so more people, uh, because the stores were closed, we were able to utilize people from the stores to also chat to customers, to pick up phone calls, to reply to emails. But that was not enough for us because the queries we started receiving uh, were completely different from what we received before. So people who were contacting stores to ask about products, uh, to ask about, I don't know, which bike should I buy, suddenly started contacting our agents who knew nothing about how to choose the size of a bike or will this treadmill fit in my house, I have this much space, uh, how to know, uh, and all of these kind of uh, questions. So this led us to actually um, changing the way that we work. So we started emphasizing a lot on conversational AI and really pushing on reducing the manual uh, non-added value tasks. So at this point, we closed the phone lines and um, focused on all the channels except phone. So this is what I'm going to explain a bit further. Uh, so the change was quite uh, big for us. The first change that I just mentioned was we completely closed our phone lines. It was a very, very bold move. It was very complicated to explain to the business, to all the stakeholders, how it's COVID now, uh, we don't have stores. Uh, also, we will close phone lines for customers. What is going to happen? How are customers going to contact us? And it was a big challenge because um, I had to explain to a lot of people that, okay, if customer calls us and stays on hold for like one hour, it doesn't really help us, right? So it just shows that uh, it's very, very bad customer service experience. Instead, if we have other channels, we put more channels, we automatize them, we provide good response, customers will be happier, and it's going to be better for us. So we decided to put it in place as a test, and as the test is started, and here it still continues, uh, three years after, uh, we've proven that this showed good results, which I will uh, explain about a little bit uh, further, because when you work with automation, it can really, really help other live channels. Now there are a lot of live channels to automatize, automize the phone solutions as well, uh, but at the moment we are not planning to put phone lines uh, back, and again I will explain what are we planning uh, for the future. So um, what we did as well, we didn't just put uh, live channels, so we implemented WhatsApp, Google Business Messaging, Messenger, uh, still chat remained available on our website. Uh, we also uh, focused on analyzing the conversations. So what is it that customers contact us about? We uh, identified the top contact reasons and looked into ways of uh, how to automatize them. So what do we need to connect to, to be sure that uh, AI can reply to those questions? Because at that point, connections to our systems uh, were very limited with our um, uh, chat and uh, live um, conversation tools. So um, one example is uh, order tracking. An agent always clicks on the tracking link, uh, tells customer where is the parcel, customer is like, okay, thank you very much. It's a very repetitive task, so we started automatizing these ones to be sure that agents can be redirected to tasks which uh, need manual um, interaction. Uh, so we automatized uh, queries which are um, how to return, where is my parcel, is my shop open in COVID, very, very popular question, where is my closest store. Uh, after that, we moved on to another one, uh, like product recommendation, uh, for example, so I want to buy running shoes, okay, what is your size, do you want to buy them in your closest store, which is this one, and things like that. So it was very, very important for us to identify really what customers want and how can we, if we can, automatize it. Uh, the last but not least is because we automatized a lot of non-added value tasks, such as order tracking, store opening hours, and everything I've mentioned just now, we were able to move resources to tasks which we believed had a lot of added value. Uh, so um, there are customers who uh, want to buy, let's say, more expensive products. We call them our investment products because these are the products where customer pays a lot and we get a lot of margin, of course. Uh, we believe that a customer needs human help to buy those products. So if I'm gonna buy a table tennis table for 1,000 pounds, I don't want to chat to a bot, I want to chat to a person, and we want to chat to that person too to give them extra support. Or um, if we have customers, for example, 
I don't know, someone says I need to buy my wife a treadmill, she needs to lose 10 kilograms in one week, which treadmill <laughs> should I buy? Um, quite a common question, uh, actually. <laughs> and we need to be able to help those customers as well, because treadmills are expensive, and customer wants reassurance that what they are buying will meet their needs. That again, as I mentioned at the beginning, the treadmill will fit in their house or wherever they want to put it. So we moved people to this kind of um, interactions. We created a team that we call technical team and they chat uh, to customers about uh, products. Chat can still start uh, with a bot. Bot asks basic questions. So what are you going to chat about? Product, okay, what product is it? Treadmill. Uh, great, uh, do you want a specific treadmill? Customer obviously says no. Do you want help choosing the treadmill? I don't know. Uh, and then at the end, you still end up chatting to a human if you uh, have questions. So the basic filter is the bot, but later on, if you need more interaction, it's the human. So the rule that we started with and that we are trying to keep is if customer is chatting about this kind of products, uh, it has three interactions back and forth with the bot. After the third one, it gets redirected to a human automatically so we can help them out. Uh, doing this, uh, we changed our customer service strategy. So our strategy was as in many uh, other companies and also in Decathlon, it's quite common, to reduce the contacts. So we wanted to reduce the contacts because uh, the idea was, uh, okay, less contacts, more happy people, they don't need to contact me, everything is working. So using AI, we realized that we can utilize contacts to bring added value. So it's n n we got rid of contacts, uh, how to track my order, where is my store and all of that. And we saw that the contacts where we invest time, they have added value because people buy. And as a result, we changed our strategy towards this. So in the Catalan, we call it um, transforming the share of contacts from toxic contacts to sporty contacts. So we want to get rid of contacts that don't have added value for us, but we want to have more contacts that bring actually added value, and we need to have people available for those contacts. Uh, we started this two years ago. Uh, it was quite an interesting strategy because from there our contacts actually went up but the human contacts went down because the bot is uh, taking the non-added value ones and the person is taking uh, the other ones. So now a few numbers, uh, just the key numbers, the main ones of what we actually reached when we automatized in this way and when we changed how we work. First one is 50% uh, of all our contacts today are fully automatized. So uh, it took us a long time to get there, so later I will explain what did we do to automatize 50%, but we want to have a higher uh, percentage now. It's not enough for us, we want to move on. Uh, this basically means that uh, we can keep working with the same number of people, and people, if the contacts go up, we move them towards treating contacts. If the contacts uh, are stable, they can focus more on other tasks. As I mentioned, just chatting about sport or working on other projects that bring more added value for the company. The second one is the productivity. So the productivity of agents increased by 25%. Phone was absolutely not productive. Uh, it's mostly first contact resolution, yes, but you spend more time talking to the customer on the phone. And him being 40 minutes on hold uh, really doesn't help because he just gets more and more and more frustrated as he keeps um, waiting. Uh, so this brought us more productivity, why? Because um, if first thing people see when they contact us is still the bot. If the bot didn't answer question of a customer, customer interacts with an agent, but AI already did the first filter, so by the time customer is talking to an agent, agent has all the information that the customer provided to the bot. It can be their order number, it will be what they are not happy with, I don't know, missing items, uh, damaged items, or whatever. Customer uh, normally already told the bot what they want, so for the agent it saves a lot of time and we counted that it is 25% more productive for us. And the last but not the least is the satisfaction. So we've increased our satisfaction using AI by 10 points. Uh, the biggest question was when we started implementing this, 
we remove the phone, we invested our time in an AI, how will the customer react? Because productivity is great, um, of course, uh, it's amazing for the business, but is the customer happy at the end? Today we are on 95% or above customer satisfaction. So if we go below 95, we try to check what is the issue. And it works great because it shows that uh, the way we implemented AI, actually customer is happy to interact with it. It is treating 50% of the contacts by itself. So it means that having this satisfaction, customer is happy to interact with our uh, bot. So what did we do to reach 50% and to actually improve the satisfaction? First point is uh, we connected to the right tools. So as I mentioned a little bit before, uh, we started identifying the questions of customers, so the most frequently asked questions, and we uh, tried to identify what tools do we need to connect to to get that data. So in Decathlon, as we are a big company, we work with loads of tools. I'm sure a lot of you probably do too, if you work in contact centers. Uh, so um, we've identified the main ones which we need to connect to to get uh, the information that the bot will need and to present it also in a user-friendly way. It's very important because we can connect to a lot of tools. Uh, for example, when we connected to our tracking tool at the beginning, the results customers were getting was like, I don't know, where is my order? Uh, you input the order number and it says, uh, your order has been shipped, the current status is uh, sales order uh, raised. What is sales order raised? Customer doesn't understand what it means. So we had to adapt also the statuses on different tools to be sure that it is user friendly for the customer, which was not easy. Uh, second point was um, we started with very, very small, really straightforward questions and gradually developed from there. Uh, so an example, how do I return? We started with that one and uh, today we are already on uh, um, a flow of product recommendations. So as I mentioned before as well, I want to buy running shoes. Okay, what is your size? Uh, I don't know which color you prefer. Qu simple questions like that. The bot is able to show customer uh, products. Uh, again, it was a long way. So we started really, really small because when we just started, we've seen that the replies were not very accurate. And they were not very accurate because the bot was not working, but they were not accurate because the information on the system was wrong. So it actually helped us to learn a lot because we saw that a lot of internal information that we have on the system was not very accurate. Before, we didn't care too much because, okay, if it says a table tennis uh, uh, weighs, I don't know, 50 kilograms, in reality it weighs 100, uh, who cares? In the warehouse, we have thousands of those table tennis tables, we are gonna ship them. But the customer needs to know, they can ask, uh, will it fit in my car? Uh, do I need someone to help me out? And stuff like that. So we actually modified a lot of internal uh, tools thanks to using AI because we've spotted that we had a lot of mistakes as well, which was great too. Uh, so we couldn't uh, go very, very fast because uh, it would lead us to big failure and the satisfaction would drop. The third point is we keep analyzing the conversations. Uh, so AI is great and it learns a lot and very fast, but you need to help it learn. Uh, so you need to see if the responses that you give are what customer wants to get. So the first few months, uh, we had a lot of people who were just focused on analyzing the conversations. If customer interacted with the bot, why did he leave a bad rating? Is it that he was not happy with the information or did the bot provide the wrong information? Uh, if customer interacted with the bot and asked to talk to an agent, does he really need an agent or did the bot give him the wrong uh, information? Uh, so we were checking all of that and it took us really th around three months, I think we were kind of stuck, uh, but after that we moved on really, really quickly because we adapted the whole conversational flow and we keep adapting it. So if it works today for the customer, doesn't mean that it's going to work tomorrow. Things can break all the time. And the more tools you are connected to, the more chance that something is going to break, sadly. <laughs> so basically, uh, we keep analyzing this and we keep um, continuing to invest a lot of time and resources in actually analyzing uh, what we don't like. So if the satisfaction drops, what happened and how to improve it. 
Uh, our future plans, uh, so just quickly to touch on that, uh, it's uh, really quite straightforward. First one is from cost center to profit center. As you know, customer service is a cost for the company. Using AI, uh, we want to also prove that it's not just a cost. We are also efficient. We can bring money. We can sell products. We can bring a lot of added value with that. Omnichannel customer experience, we believe that really um, customer doesn't matter if he wants to go to the store or if he wants to buy online needs to have exactly the same experience we need to be able to show our products online the same as we do in store advise customers the same as we do in store and last point on this one is that 50 percent of the customers who um, visit uh, who go to our stores visit the website before for us, this data is very, very important. It means we can use chat as well uh, to help customers find what they need in the store. So we are really, this year, we are trying to utilize that and we will continue throughout the next years. And just quickly, I put much more uh, with things like chat GPT developing and all of that. Who knows what else is coming? Uh, surely we will have much more functionalities that we can use. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. That was fantastic. Thank you so much.